All right, let's go ahead and get started. And so today we're going to be talking, uh, our session is about uh, deploying Bluebird nest boxes. Uh, and then we'll also end it with a little bit of some of the wildlife here at the range cattle REC and some of the surrounding ranches. But before we started off, I just wanted to, to say that I've been really enjoying uh, the back and forth, uh, the questions and, and feedback I'm getting via chat in, in the earlier sessions and even uh, email. Uh, for example, uh, Mike Avasado uh, with the California Bluebird Recovery Program ha gave me a couple of important uh, tips about uh, nest boxes openings. So they use a, a lot of uh, front openings out there. Um, and one of the advantages of front openings obviously is when you open up the box, you can easily peek in uh, where you don't have to open up the box all the way. And then uh, um, at another important point about uh, uh, well, I have forgotten it. <laughs> That's embarrassing. Um, hopefully he'll chime in. I think he's on here. Oh yes, right. This the advantage of a side. However, the advantage of a, a side opening uh, is that uh, you still provide the bluebird. <laughs> with its normal escape route through the entrance hole. So um, it, it might stay a little less calm and it'd be a little less stressful potentially with a side opening. That being said, uh, uh, front openings and side openings are both used readily uh, all across the country. So there are uh, some differences. So uh, before, so let's go ahead and jump in with the video and uh, we'll try to have uh, answer questions uh, as they come or at the end as well. All right, thanks for joining us today. So today we're gonna to be deploying our nest boxes uh, for our study on which nest box uh, has the best bluebird performance and which, which nest box is preferred by bluebirds. So before we jump into the actual deployment, I wanna go over our study objectives and methodology just a little bit. So. Our study objectives are to determine which of these different nest boxes, the Florida Bluebird Society design, the North American Bluebird Society design, and the Gilbertsons is preferred by bluebirds in Florida, and which has the best reproductive success for bluebirds. So the number of eggs hatched, the number of uh, nestlings fledged. And we're also going to look at predation attempts, and if there's any difference in predation attempts among these three different box designs. So the first, uh, the way we're designing this study is we're gonna have, we've got 20 sites here at the Range Cattle REC. And each of these sites are spaced at least 120 meters from another. So there's gonna be no interference, uh, hopefully from neighboring bluebirds at these sites. But within each site, we're gonna have all three of these nest, box, nest boxes deployed. And each of the boxes themselves is going to be 30 meters apart to hopefully minimize uh, conflict if uh, at an individual site we have bluebirds both in the maps and for design for example um, so we're going to go out into the field and we're going to be deploying these boxes and the first thing that we'll have to do is uh, select our site and in our videos upcoming we'll be talking about site selection and the importance of choosing a good site for bluebirds. But once we've got our uh, site selected, we're going to set our hole at that site. So for the Florida Bluebird Society and for the mats, we're using PVC pipe, and you can see it's got a sharpened edge that's gonna help us put the PVC pipe into the ground. And we've already deployed the predator guard onto this PVC pipe, and it's fitted not only with screws inside here, but uh, gorilla tape uh, up here at the top to prevent anything from coming up uh, the PVC pipe to the nest box. So the PVC pipe is going to be in the ground and the nest box is going to sit up on top of that, up here like that. So to attach the nest box to the PVC pipe, we need to use these uh, pipe straps, right? And so we're going to attach these to the back of the nest boxes. 
allow us to secure the nest box onto the PVC pipe. Now the Gilbertson is a little bit different than the Nat, uh, Portable Bird Society for Nats. The Gilbertson attaches in this hole under, uh, on the back side here. And so it's much smaller, a PVC pipe's not gonna fit in there. And this is a lighter box in general. And so for that, we're gonna be using a combination of rebar and conduit. So the rebar is gonna be going into the ground. And then we're gonna attach to the rebar this conduit using uh, these screw clamps here. So after we get the rebar in the ground, the screw clamp is going to attach the conduit to the rebar. And then the gilbertsons will fit on top. Well, first we'll put the predator dart, like we used with the PVC, and we'll attach it with some screws, and then we'll put the gilbertsons on top of that. So what we'll see in the next videos is all the steps for deploying these nest boxes using our design where we're testing out which nest box performs best, which nest box blueberries prefer, and which nest box minimizes Hey there. So today we're going to be setting up our nest boxes and we're going to start with the Gilbertson. And to do, uh, to set up the Gilbertson, we're going to use a rebar stake. We're going to put this into the ground and then we're going to put our conduit over top. And then the conduit, we'll put the predator guard over the conduit. And then the Gilbertson, with its little slot hole there, we'll slip right on top. So when we're thinking about putting up a bluebird nest box, the site that you actually put the boxes box at is important. And we want to choose areas that are good bluebird habitat. So where we're at now, this is improved pasture here at the rangeland. So you see it's uh, low vegetation cover. Bluebirds don't like that. This will allow them to catch insects. We've got perches. Uh, available for bluebirds not only on the fences but also further in the distance we have electrical wires and some trees so this is going to be a good spot to put up our bluebird nest box now when we put it up we want to make sure that we're not too close to a fence post uh, because we don't want predators to be able to jump from that fence post into the into or onto the nest box so what we've got here is our four four foot rebar now we're gonna put this rebar two feet or 61 centimeters into the ground. So I'm just gonna measure that distance so we uh, know how far to put it in. We've got 61 right there. And I'm gonna mark it with a Sharpie. And that helps me keep track of how far in to use uh, the mallet. So here's where we're gonna put the Gilbert's uh, uh, nest box. Now you see we're sort of close to the fence and this is, uh, because we're gonna mount a camera on that fence post to watch this nest box for predation. This is still well enough, uh, far enough away that we're not gonna have any uh, predators like raccoons or squirrels jumping from that fence post onto this uh, nest box. So we marked, uh, in the last step, we marked it with our Sharpie. So we're just gonna hammer this in. We want to make sure we get it all the way in. A little bit more to go. And that looks pretty good. All right, so now we're just going to check and make sure we got it in far enough. So we want, it's a four foot rebar. So we want two feet, two feet of rebar above the surface. And if we look, we're right at 61, 62 centimeters. So that's right there how deep we want it all right so we've got our rebar in the ground so the next step is to put the conduit on conduits going to attach the rebar at the bottom with these uh screw clamps and then we'll be putting the gilberts in on top of the conduit it's going to slide right into the hole here there we 
go. Now, what we want to do is we want to make sure that the nest box entrance is about five feet off the ground. So what I've got here is just our 30, our uh, meter tape, which also has feet on the other side. And I've got it staked into the ground so that I can measure up to the top. And so what this is showing us is we're about four inches shy of five feet. So what we're gonna want to do, if you go with some back off, is we're gonna wanna raise this conduit up about four inches and mark it. So let's go down there and do that. There we go. We're gonna mark it. And, all right, so now we've got our, our conduit tightened onto the rebar at the proper height. So the next step is to put our predator guard on. And we're gonna be putting these uh, stovepipe baffle uh, type of design uh, predator guards on. And so what we'll need to do is put in some screws into the conduit that'll hold this stove type baffle uh, at the proper height below the nest box. So to just get an idea of what we need to do, we're gonna slide uh, that stovepipe baffle on top here. Right. And then we'll put our Gilbert segment on top. Now we want it sort of close uh, to the nest box, right? So let's see what we got distance wise here. All right, that looks good. So what we're going to do is mark this with a Sharpie, and then we'll put those screws in at that. There we go. All right, so we've got our uh, one to two inch screws. We put them in here on each side, and they're not in all the way. They're only in just a little bit, and that's to help that stove pipe fast and stay on in place. So let's go ahead and slide that on. So the last step, of course, is to put uh, the nest box, the Gilbertson nest box on top. So we're gonna slide that on top of the conduit here. Now, and there it is, nice and snug. It's gonna stay secure. Now it's important when you're putting the nest box on, and this is for any of the nest boxes, that you'll want the entrance to face either north or east. This is better than south or west. And so we'll check uh, our orientation here, and this is more or less uh, north, and we can check the comments. All right, so the next step, and this is for our research project, we're going to be recording information about these nests, uh, this nest, uh, the site, and the box itself. So first, this is our nest uh, site number 10, so we'll put 10 in here. Now we want to look at our general habitat description of this area. And so that's within a 50 meter radius. And we're going to see similar reporting information if you're recording this information for nestwatch.com, uh, for example, which I encourage you to do if you're putting up nest boxes. So they'll want you to give an approximate general habitat of a football sized area around your nest box. So looking around here, we have improved pasture. We've got some small comp clumps of trees in the distance. Those are probably uh, more than 50 meters away. We have some fence rows, multiple fence rows. We've got a uh, one of our pasture lanes here that is rarely used. Uh, so really infrequent road, uh, some more fence posts and we have some cattle. And then we have a little bit of wetland as well. So we'll write in under general habitat description, improved pasture, And we'll write that there's a wetland nearby, small wetland nearby. And we've got a, just a box here because we have both improved and semi-native pasture here uh, at the range cattle REC. So we'll write this as improved. And maybe later we'll go visit some semi-native. Now, this is our first box at this site. So what we're doing setup wise is we're always going to set up our middle box. So we're going to have three boxes in a row. One on the left, one in the middle, and one on the right. Each of those boxes are going to be 30 meters apart. So this Gilbertson is going to be box B. So we'll write in 10B down here. Now we're going to come out here 
uh, and our, take our GPS coordinates. Now we deployed this box on January 4th, 2021. Now it's a Gilbertson, so we'll write that in. And our orientation of the cavity uh, is northeast. Now next, we're gonna come back and we'll measure our cavity height off the ground. Should be approximately five feet. And then we're gonna measure uh, with our meter square, the dominant vegetation immediately around the nest box and an average vegetation height. Um, and then we'll come with our meter tape and we'll measure the distance to the nearest tree, group of trees, fence, road, and electrical wires uh, or any other tall wires. Um, and then we'll also record the type of road that's a pasture lane that's behind us. And then because we're here on the range cattle REC, this is an experimental range land. And so they're doing a lot of different manipulations with the pastures out here. So each pasture has a unique identifier and that way we can track if there's a burn or a grazing intensity for, uh, that occurs why the nest box is deployed. So next, we're gonna actually show some video of collecting some of this information. So we've got our, uh, our meter tape. It's staked into the ground here at the base of the nest box. So we're gonna use that meter tape to measure in centimeters the height uh, of our nest box entrance. And our nest box entrance here is at 100, uh, 155 centimeters. Now, the next thing we want to do is measure to the nearest fence, which is directly in front of the nest box. So it's staked in, so we can just pull our meter tape out to the fence and get a reading down here. We are at 3.6 meters to the nearest fence. Now, the next thing we want to do is measure that nearest row. So let's go around backwards. Behind the nest box is our nearest row, which is a uh, pasture lane. So the distance to that pasture lane was 21.8 meters. Now our next things we want to measure to are the nearest single tree and the nearest group of trees. So it looks like in the distance we have a tree out there. And so what we'll do is we'll use a range finder to get that distance because it's greater than what we want to. And now we also have our nearest uh, electric pole or phone line with wires. These can act as perch, uh, perches, perch, so we'll range find that distance. And then it looks like we, yeah, our nearest group of trees is over there. And so we'll range find that and input that into our data sheet. Now, the next thing we want to do is measure the vegetation within that one meter area immediately around the nest box. So let's move some of our equipment out of the way here. So we've got our meter square and our dominant vegetation is grass. I think this is bahia grass because this is an improved pasture here at the, the range cattle REC. Now, grass is, uh, we've trampled it a little bit with our installation of our nest box. So we'll make sure that it's more or less natural. And then we'll get a measurement in centimeters of the average height of this bahia grass. Yeah. So we're looking, this clump here is about 20. This one's uh, about 18 to 20. And this one is about 20 as well. So we're looking, this bahia grass on average right now is about 20 centimeters tall. And that's by far the dominant vegetation occurring immediately around the nest box. So what I'm doing here is I'm gonna measure out 30 meters and 30 meters is the distance between each nest box design. So we want 30 meters because we don't want uh, bluebirds to interfere with each other if they end up occupying multiple nest box designs at each site. So I've attached my meter tape to the base of that nest box using a stake and I'm walking out there. I'm just checking to see how far I've got. 
And I'm going to walk out all the way to 30 meters because then I'll know where I can set the next nest box at. It looks like I'm almost there. And there I am. So I'm at 30 meters now. And so we can set our next nest box there. meters from our previous nest box and here we're going to set up the NAVS box. Now the NAVS box and the Florida Bluebird Society's box, which we're going to do next, they're mounted on PVC. Um, Stove pipe's already been installed here with uh, uh, duct tape and screws holding it in. Um, now PVC is a little harder to get in to the ground than that uh, rebar. So we're gonna to have to use a couple of advanced tools. We've got a shovel to break uh, into the sod and get past the grass here. And we've got post digger. And then we've got some mallets here. We've got a metal and a rubber mallet. And we've got our ladder so that we can get the leverage up on top to hammer that PVC pipe in. Now, something you want to notice is the PVC pipe. We've cut it at an angle down here, right? That's to help it go in. Now, we need to put this PVC pipe in about a foot and a half into the ground. So the first step we need to do is measure that foot and a half and mark it with a Sharpie so we know how deep we need to go. We've got our meter stick right here, a foot and a half, about 46 centimeters. We'll measure that right there. And that's how deep we need to go. All right, so we've got our shovel here. We're going to sort of break into the ground, get this first layer of grass out of the way so that the post digger has a little more room to work here. Digger. So we're just going to use this uh, post hole digger to get, sort of get started. Um, we're not going to dig that whole foot and a half with this guy. We're just going to get started so that we could, can then use the mallet uh, while we're on the ladder to hammer that PVC pipe in. There we go. So we've not now got a little bit of a starter hole. All right, so now we're going to get up on the ladder here so that we can get above the top of the PVC pipe to uh, hammer and pound this into the ground. So we're using the mallet to hammer it in. We're watching our black Sharpie mark to make sure that we get a foot and a half. So our next step is to pre-drill uh, our pipe strap, or pre-drill the holes for our pipe straps onto our uh, bird box, our nest box. And that's going to hold the nest box onto the PVC so we can set it down here. And what we'll be doing, so we've got these uh, one and a half inch pipe straps. We're going to put them here and here and we'll pre-drill holes uh, for one inch screws. Right, so we pre-drilled those holes and then we've put the screws in just enough to hold it on here because we don't wanna tighten the screws all the way up on and all the way till we have it on the nest box. Now, because we put our PVC pipe one and a half feet into the ground and we were resting the nest box roof right above the top of the PVC, that's going to allow us our nest box entrance to be approximately five feet off the ground. Now we'll still measure it as part of our, our, our research studies and we'll, and we'll measure that in centimeters, but this should be approximately five feet off the ground. 
So we're gonna go ahead and tighten these screws on. All right, so just wanted to point out a few interesting things with this site. So we have a little bit of uh, some pig damage here. So while pigs have been rooting here, rooting probably for tubers or grubs, and then right next door, we've got a fire ant mound. And you can see a few of them right here. So fire ants are actually a predator, a uh, nest predator of bluebirds. So it'll be interesting. We never want to put a bluebird nest too close to uh, a fire ant mound. Uh, this one's pretty far away, so hopefully it'll be all right, but we'll be monitoring it. And earlier we pointed out how this has, uh, area has a little bit of wetland. So we've been seeing a couple birds uh, because of that wetland. We've had some yellow legs flying around and some killdeer in the field as well. All right, so now we're 30 meters away from Gilbertson. So we've got in the distance, we've got our maps. Gilbertson, and now we're going to put the Florida Bluebird Society design blocks up. And these were actually donated by the Florida Bluebird Society, who has recently became a partner in this research. So we're very excited to have them join us uh, in looking at both nest box designs and the role uh, of bluebirds and uh, cattle. So we've got our Florida Bluebird box. We're going to mount it on PVC. We've got that stovepipe stove pipe baffle already ready to go. And so this is just like uh, the NABs, so we're going to be using our specialized tools of uh, a shovel and a post hole digger and mallets and a ladder, and we're going to put it in. Now, one of the interesting things, we're in this field, and right as we uh, walked up to this site, we disturbed three uh, eastern meadowlarks, so another nice bird to see in this sort of uh, habitat. All right, so we've got our PVC in the ground now. We've got our stovepipe baffle. baffle. Now we're using um, some of the uh, Florida Bluebird Society nest boxes that were donated to us. And these are made out of cedar, so it's really nice, really light wood, but it's thinner than the wood we've been using for the other boxes. So we've got to, uh, we've went ahead and we've pre-drilled and we've got our screws in so that we can put uh, the box on the PVC, but we had to use screws that are about a, that are half an inch, right? Because this is a lot thinner wood. You don't want uh, the tip of that screw poking into the actual nest box. We used a thinner screw. So we're gonna go ahead and slide it on here. And then we're, because this is a different nest box design than the NABs, uh, we're gonna need to measure and make sure that we get the proper height with uh, the nest box entrance being five feet off the ground. All right, so we've got our Florida Bluebird Society nest box installed, uh, and it's our third in a row. So we've got this site now complete. We're going to record our habitat measurements at this nest box, and then we'll be done for this site, and we'll go on to the complete the other 19 sites that we're going to be doing uh, at this study. I uh, hope you enjoyed that video of deploying the nest boxes. Uh, so now I just wanted to uh, show you a couple of uh, images um, of different birds and some wildlife uh, that we see here at the range cattle REC. And uh, so some a lot of these images are coming. Uh, uh, we haven't been as lucky to get these striking images. They're coming from different sources. Uh, my predecessor, uh, my uh, rangeland wildlife uh, ecology uh, professor that was here before me uh, actually was doing a, a large-scale camera study so he was lucky enough to get a lot of really cool camera images of some of these different wildlife and he's uh, graciously enough uh, shared those images or allowed us to use his, those images for this presentation um, so uh, let's get started here so uh, one of the real common birds here at the range cattle REC is the uh, American kestrel. And this is a subspecies, um, non-migratory subspecies in Florida. It's actually threatened. Uh, so these uh, kestrels are, are cavity nesters as well. And so you can build nest boxes for, for kestrels. Um, and they're an important predator of bluebirds. And I think we've got a video here. Yeah, there's one, right, we took that uh, a few days ago there.
And then uh, red-shouldered hawks, another real common uh, avian predator here at, at the ranch. Um, and this is uh, one of those uh, trail cam photos uh, that my predecessor, Dr. Raoul Botton, was uh, and his team were lucky enough to get. You can see he's got a snake there. And then here, uh, I don't know if this is a video. Yep. Yeah. There you go. Now that was a bit zoomed in. <laughs> and then Harriers as well. We saw one of these the other day uh, on the ranch. Now they're an important uh, rangeland species and predator. And then burrowing owls. We're lucky enough to, uh, that we see burrowing owls here every year. Um, so burrowing owls uh, actually create their nest underground in, in a burrow, uh, sometimes using gopher tortoise uh, burrows. It's a really interesting bird. You'll occasionally see them uh, fly up uh, and do their sort of wiggle dance on a fence post uh, as you're driving by. And then barred owl is another really common one here. Uh, I hear that when I stay out here at the ranch, uh, I hear them every e evening uh, doing their who cooks for you calls. And then barn owls are, uh, are here as well. Uh, I haven't seen one yet at the range cattle REC, uh, but they are around. And um, so there's a really interesting story about uh, barn owls uh, as a biological control for uh, rats in the sugarcane fields a little further south in Florida. Um, there's uh, some researchers that are using uh, uh, barn owls for uh, rat control in sugar fields, sugarcane fields. Um, I think he's uh, this researcher. I think he's got maybe a thousand of them down there. So uh, important and interesting bird. Oh yeah, and so they have been seen here at the REC. I just haven't been lucky enough to see one. Yeah. And then uh, turkey vultures, uh, extremely common uh, at the range cattle REC and, and on range lands in general. And uh, there's also black vultures. And so the, one of the easiest ways to tell black vultures from turkey vultures is obviously their head. Uh, black vultures are a little bit smaller. And then um, there's not, not great photos of their wings, but when you're often, you're below turkey vultures and they're soaring ahead uh, above you, um, you can also distinguish them by the uh, pattern of the white and black feathers. So uh, the white feathers of turkey vulture are done to extend all along the bottom of their wing, uh, and the white feathers for the black vulture are at the tips. So bald eagles are here as well. Um, pretty uh, always exciting to see bald eagles. And then sandhill cranes, uh, we get a lot of these uh, out here. And when I first moved down, uh, I have a Springer Spaniel. And so we were out walking, uh, and taking a walk and the sandhill cranes came over doing their real loud honking and uh, uh, calls and landed and it actually frightened my dog. So um, <laughs> yeah, pretty fun experience for her, I guess. And uh, we'll have the, the sandhill cranes hanging out here. We'll sometimes hang around the supplemental feed, uh, feed for the cattle. And then we've got a, a fair, some wet areas here at the REC. And so we get uh, a lot of our uh, wetland birds like the great blue heron and the little blue. And of course the night herons, the black crowned night heron and the yellow crowned night heron are out here. Um, the bittern, um, we, we've seen these on, on the trail cams. That's one of Dr. Bouton's images. Um, They've got that real distinct guttural uh, call, and sometimes we'll hear it uh, in the evenings and the early mornings. And then snowy egrets and great egrets as well. And now one bird that we don't have a, a slide here for is cattle egret. And cattle egret are non-native to North America, but they're extremely common in rangelands, especially where, uh, around cattle. Like they'll follow cattle around and eating uh, insects and uh, and such stirred up by cattle and attracted to cattle. And then wood storks are here. Um, just the other day, we, there were, uh, well, not here, but just the other day, there was, was like 10 wood storks on my drive. 
as I as I was driving in. So I I, will, I really like seeing wood storks. And then the ibises, the glossy and the white ibis. We've got these was just across uh, from some of those nest boxes that we put in in that small wetland. We had some white ibis. It's the same day we put those in. And then we also add yellow legs at that little wet uh, wetland as well. So important little shore birds. And then turkey, of course, um, lots of turkey, lots of good sightings of turkey down here. And then meadow larks, uh, we saw these uh, a lot in the, in the fields as we're setting up the nest boxes. Ooh, there we go. There's our uh, little video of a uh, meadow lark. Oh, and here's our cattle egret slide, right? There we go. Hanging out all over the cattle, very common, uh, but they are non-native. And here, here they are at the REC just uh, yesterday. We've got a few alligators here uh, at the REC. We've got a, a one of our little uh, ditches, uh, irrigation and water ditches. It's got a big alligator in it and a couple of little guys as well. Um, and then one year there was uh, some juveniles that came right up to the center buildings and were all over the place. Uh, there were several of them, so it was fun for everybody. And then gopher tortoise, really common out here. So gopher tortoise ecosystem engineer keystone species, they create these really large burrows. Uh, they can be up to six, uh, on average, about 15 feet in length and going six feet deep. Um, and these burrows are used by lots of different species, snakes, burrowing owls, for example, and really important uh, species for uh, the range lands here in Florida. Uh, gopher tortoise are the only tortoise in Eastern North America. Yeah, so thanks everybody for coming. Uh, our next session is February 28th, where we'll actually be doing some nest box checks and talking a bit more about bluebird ecology in the field. Hopefully, uh, hopefully have some more video and images of different rangeland out, uh, wildlife out here. And uh, yeah, I hope you all join us and feel free to ask any questions. We'll stick on here for a few minutes in, in case there are any other questions, but uh, thanks for joining. And I said it in the video, but I'll say it again. Uh, we're extremely excited that the Florida Bluebird Society has partnered uh, with this research project and help, is helping support this research because I think it's important uh, and it's, it's really exciting to have them on board. All right, uh, well, thank you everyone. And we'll see, uh, you again in February, February 28th. All right, thanks.